Hello again, welcome back to another uh, lesson in PIC microcontroller uh, programming and construction. This episode we're going to do another uh, Visual Basic uh, program for those of you. Uh, it seems that everybody really enjoyed the uh, RS-232 Visual Studio demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'm doing another one. Um, those of you that have seen my past videos, we did some accelerometer stuff that was pretty cool. Um, messing with some accelerometers and I created a program using Visual Basic just a real simple program to um, showcase how the accelerometers work basically what it does is through RS-232 it reads in serially some uh, data that the p microcontroller is spitting out and um, it reads that data in and then moves some sliders around now um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. This is the the form that I got, and I kind of did kind of I kind of cheated here. <laughs> what I did to make these is I actually took and put two um, two labels up. Which those of you that don't know what labels are, if you go to your toolbox, you've got the uh, the label, and basically what you do is you set one label down. And you change uh, its border style to fix 3D and its back color to white or to control light. And um, that would kind of give it that pressed in effect. And then what I did was then created another label, which then I then set the text property, if I can find it, or the caption of it, or the name, excuse me, name, I'm sorry. Uh, there it is to LBLX, did the same thing for the Y, said it is LBLY, and what I did was put them right on top of each other. And basically what we're going to do is um, we're going to play with the width of the, of the, of the blue one, or we're going to play with the width of it, and based on the data that we're receiving from the pick, we're going to then make the width either longer or shorter. And that will then make it look like a slider for us. So we did that uh, both X and Y and then we coded some buttons. So to get started, let's look at the serial port. What we did here was I connected COM4, which is our COM port 4. Um, on my computer, I, again, like if you saw the previous videos, I used one of those uh, USB to serial because the computer I use doesn't have a serial port actually on board, so I use one of those USB to serial converter cables. So we set up COM4, set up our baud rate to 9600 since that's what the, the chip is and then we just named it serial port 1. So now what we do is if you double click on the form we go into the uh, forms event receiver. What we do here is in the form load um, item events receiver we take and we set label X's width to 0 and Y's to 0. So that kind of initializes it as blank basically um, it has no width the blue bar so that you'll you'll just have a white kind of pressed in box. We then come back and for the port open button we go ahead and let me buzz back here for the command open we have our try statement like we did in the previous one and we open our serial port and then if there's any errors we catch those and print those out to the screen and then uh, basically we just say that if it's if the port one is open we kind of print a mess message box that says that uh, it was open successfully if so otherwise you know there will be an error then um, to begin the start command, what we did inside that I item event receiver, that's where we start doing all the reading. So let's scroll down, get that kind of in view. What we do on our start is we declare a couple of variables, x and y, to, uh, to store basically our coordinates. Um, we declare basically a character because when we read stuff in, the, we'll read them in as a character. And it's going to be a 14 character uh, long uh, deal. What we did was basically um, I have it set up in the format of x equals uh, then the first co coordinate value which is a two digit coordinate then I think there's a couple of spaces and then y equals and then the two values so all together you have about 14 characters so what we're going to do is um, we're going to take and read those in a while loop so basically our start val is a is a string we're going to do some kind of string manipulation too and then so basically we've got while bl clicks so while it's clicked we also have 
a module. Let's see if we can get our job out of here. Whoops, that's a, our data server. Where's our project? Here it is, and there's our module. Um, we created a module, which uh, it's very easy to create a module. All you do is right click on accelerometer, choose add, you'll say new item, and then when it comes up you'll pick you'll pick module. So in here there's module. And then you just give it a name and click add. And what that does is that adds kind of like a global uh, sheet of paper essentially where you can place your global variables that can move in and out of forms, in and out of different uh, event receivers. Basically it's just a place to put global variables. So we set a global variable called BL click. Um, that's basically when, uh, lets us know if we've clicked the stop button or not. So see our stop button, and we'll look at the code on the stop button here in a minute. But our module basically it's just a boolean value, true or false, and um, if it's true it means we've clicked the stop button. If it's false, we haven't. So um, really fast since the stop button's pretty quick. See here in our stop button, all we have is just setting our BL button to true. So when we click stop, then it knows that we've clicked stop. Um, so we'll go back in here. Um, see, we start off with it being false. So that way, if we've you, you know if we've clicked stop previously, when we click start again, it changes it back to false. So now, while not BL click, so while it's uh, while it's false. Now here's a slick little uh, deal that I I found. It's called application .do events. What this does, what this directive does, is when you're to be able to click the stop button when you're inside a loop in Visual Basic. Um, I think even Visual C, just any one of these kind of like vi the visual programs, programming languages. When you're inside of a loop and it's an infinite loop, basically it's just looping until something else is done. If you're having to click on something else. Um, to basically interrupt the loop, it will never see it. So you'll you'll basically click the stop button, you know, as much as you want, and it won't actually register that you're clicking it because it's stuck in a loop, basically. So if you key, if you add this uh, directive right here, this application dot do events, what that'll do is it'll basically search for any, you know, it, while it's looping, it will look to see if you've if you've uh, if you're clicking anything. So that allows you to be able to click that stop button and actually register and stop. Um, and basically basically register and um, make make this uh, B click true and then it'll actually see it and jump out of the loop. So that's very important to have in there. So now we're going to go ahead and read in our, uh, our, our, our piece. So basically what we're going to do is while our serial port one is not equal to capital X. We're going to um, we're just going to wait. So that way, basically, while it's transmitting, see, it may, we may catch it in the middle of the transmittal. So, like, y you know, it, it's transmitting at one rate. We're reading kind of at another rate. So you want to make sure that you don't miss something. So if basically your the picks right in the middle of an iteration. Um, since we're not sending any clocking signal to synchronize the two ports together, um, it basically will we'll just still just wait till it sees the X, you know, which is the beginning of the string. And then once it sees that, then we'll jump down to our for loop, which our for loop goes from 0 to 14, which is, you know, our, our, uh, our string, basically. And what we'll do is we'll then read character by character, and that's used with the serial port 1.readchar. And what that'll do is that then we'll increment it with our with our for uh, counter, and we'll basically read character by character that whole chunk into our 14 array. Then basically we'll watch for the new line character, um, and which is which the which the new line character I have at the end it of the of the string, so it's kind of like an end terminator. And once we reach that, so we'll keep reading it in, and then if we reach that, then it'll jump out. It'll exit the for loop hop out of that kind of break and then we start uh, calculating our our stuff so we have our int x is equal to val c3 which are uh, which that one is basically that's the third one which is there's the x then the equal sign and then the number so we want to grab that number 
and we want the value of it, which means we actually get the we use the val. Otherwise, it will it will be a character representation, which will be you know an ASCII number, basically a hexadecimal number, which we don't want. We want the actual value that it is. So we that val does that conversion for you. Then basically we're multiplying by 10 and then plus the value of C4. So that basically, see, because you're doing it a character.